Hi, how are you? Welcome in yet another 3D printer review test video thing. I hope you enjoyed it. So you may ask, seriously Nikodem, yet another 3D printer test review video, who doesn't need one? Everyone knows that Ender 3 is probably the best printer if you want a cheap printer, if you want bigger printer, CR10 is the way to go, and if you want a really good printer, probably the original Pursa i3 is the best choice. So why am I making another 3D printer video? Well, because I want to, I just want to test another printer, I want to play with 3D printers a little bit more, because I haven't been playing with 3D printers for a very long time right now. Um, and I just want to see how it works. Uh, it has some features that I really miss in my CR10 and Ender 3, uh, like auto bed leveling. It has a little bit different mechanics, which I'm also really interested to see if that will make any difference in the print quality and also the print speed. Uh, so yeah, we'll test it, we'll see how it works, just for fun to make another video on YouTube. I hope you will enjoy it, so see you in workshop. So, as always, I think we will start with simple unboxing just to see what's inside. Uh, then I will show you a little bit of the assembly process and then we'll jump to test to see if this printer is any good. So far, as for the packaging of this printer, it is really not bad. Everything was safely packed in all of those styrofoam pieces in the box and there was also all the foil on each component. Uh, we have two instructions and those are written in English that you can easily understand. Uh, that's great because, you know, not a lot of people speak Chinese. Uh, so two instructions in English, uh, one for the assembly and one for bed leveling feature. Uh, we also have accessories like we have, of course, this thing. Uh, some spare screws and other stuff and also small roll of filament 200 grams of filament white PLA and small sample of gold PLA so that's it for the unboxing and it's time for assembly
And here we are after the assembly of the Ortur V4, I'm pretty sure that's how it is called. Uh, the assembly is as simple as with CR10 or Ender 3, pretty much every 3D printer assembly looks the same nowadays. Uh, it's really not hard to do, but the build of this printer is a little bit different or maybe even a lot different than for example CR10 because instead of uh, V-wheels and aluminum profile extrusions. Right here we have something they call linear rails. Those are not linear rails that you may know from professional CNC machines or really expensive 3D printers. This is just a little bit different, maybe a little bit better because it seems to be more sturdy than the CR10. Uh, so I hope it will be better, maybe we will be able to print more precise stuff with this printer and also maybe faster. I'm heating up right now this printer and we'll run some uh, test prints, just something of the SD card that manufacturer provide. Uh, and I will print it with the filament that was provided by the manufacturer and we'll see how this thing can print. You know what's really interesting? Why people that manufacture 3D printer, people that really do a lot with 3D printers, don't even know a single thing about how to properly set model the STL file for 3D printing. Because settings for this thing, uh, this is the G code that was provided by manufacturer on the SD card of this printer, and settings for this thing are terrible, like literally terrible. There are 20 solid layers for the bottom part of this model. Uh, like 10 parameters for each layer. We are already three hours into printing this thing and we are just 15% done so it will probably take like another 10 hours. Of course I'm not going to wait that long for this print to finish so I think it's a good time to perform a power down test on this printer. I'm not even sure if this printer has the uh, recovery option after power down and I could easily probably look that up in the instruction or on the internet, but let's be honest, I'm too lazy for that. So I think I will just turn it off and now we'll see what it will do after powering it on again. There is nothing on the LCD screen of this printer and I can't click anything. For some reason, I had to click this little button under the knob uh, to see anything on the screen, I'm not sure why. And here we are printing again, so power down recovery option works well, you can easily continue printing after that. Uh, just like on the CR10 Mini, there is no such function on CR10, the original CR10, uh, but you can also do it on Ender 3, so that's okay. Just keep in mind that right here maybe, or maybe that's just the case for me, you need to press this little button down here. So now I will stop this print anyway and we'll try to print something with flexible filament. I already loaded the flexible blue filament, really nice color, uh, and this is what I am printing. Uh, something like a zip tie, I just found it on Thingiverse. It will be made out of flexible filament, and here it is, I already started printing. We'll see if flexible filament is a problem for the Ortur V4 printer. The printed zip tie is ready and it looks like flexible material is not a problem for this printer at all and that's great because we have right here both an extruder, it's not a direct extruder and generally it's really hard to print flexible materials with both an extruder but it works on this one without any problem. Uh, so let's take that off and it looks just like my uh, injection molded zip tie as you can see, let's just focus on this thing. Zip tie works fine, so let's move on to next test. Who want to see a 3D printed Benchy again? No one? That's sad because I will do it anyway. Uh, but before Benchy, I will test the auto bed leveling feature of this printer. Auto bed leveling feature is really not hard to use. Uh, there is a really clean instruction on that. Here you have a quick look at the instruction at every page. If you want, you can pause and see what this instruction says. Uh, basically, we just need to calibrate the distance uh, or more properly find the distance between the sensor and the bed and set it properly in the printer. It's really not hard to do. Power down recovery option works, flexible filament works, and auto bed leveling works, so now time for the most useless test, the Benchy.
Benchy is ready, definitely not a perfect one, but also not really that bad one. Uh, we'll take a closer look at this bench later. And right now I'm bringing this printer back home to print something big. Yesterday I was so tired that I just come back home and start printing the astronaut. It took all night over 13 hours to print this thing, which is really not a bad result because with three parameters, 25% infill and you know, quite big STL file, uh, it would take about 20 hours probably on the CR10 and Ender 3. I'm not even sure if you can fit such a big part on Ender 3, uh, but it would probably take about 20 hours and on this printer it took just 13 hours. Producer of this printer said that this printer is made for fast 3D printing uh, because of the mechanicals, because of those linear arrays and because of the rigidity. It can print fast and that's actually true. You can print faster without huge quality loss on this printer and that's nice because if you print something big like this you want you know three parameters, high infill, it can take really a lot of time but with this printer you can cut that time um, to quite reasonable amount of time so that's nice. Let's go back to Benchy for a second. On the overhangs of Benchy we can see that fan of this printer is not really that powerful and probably maybe the nozzle is also not that greatly designed. Uh, so it has some problems with overhangs, but nice thing is that you can achieve some uh, very glossy like surface on the bottom of your 3D prints thanks to, there is no glass bed in the printer, but there is a metal bed with special sticker that works kind of like a glass bed thanks to auto bed leveling, it's way easier to use. I currently replaced each glass bed on my 3D printers uh, with this kind of surface that is easier to print, but you can't have this glossy finish on the bottom, so it's nice to have that back. Uh, because sometimes you really need this kind of finish on your print. So overall, what do I think about this printer? It's quite cool, you can print fast, so if you are looking for a printer that can print fast, you want to print big objects, this printer is definitely for you. It has 24 volts power supply, so it will hold the temperatures both of the nozzle and bed pretty easily. Uh, it can print fast, it's quite heavy, so if you want to move it around, maybe that's not a printer for you. And if you are just starting, you want your first 3D printer, I would still recommend you Ender 3 or CR10 because those printers are cheaper, uh, are very reliable, you can find a lot of parts, uh, a lot of help online to those printers. Uh, so I still think that Ender 3 is probably the best cheap 3D printer that you can buy, but if you want some nice features like auto bed leveling, glass surface and some other stuff, you should go for Ortur V4. I hope you enjoyed this review of a 3D printer that is not very popular, but definitely has some advantages to other printers. Uh, the astronaut look really, really cool and I'm definitely going to paint that. First you sand all of the layers and then paint that and I will probably make a video about that, so stay tuned. Uh, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, if you would like to support my work there is a link to Patreon in the description. And that's it, thank you very much for watching, happy making, bye!